you to David for playing us in on the Finmere organ. Uh, just a, a few things to draw your attention to. Uh, firstly, next Sunday, we're going to be celebrating Plough Sunday. Sadly, this year, we can't gather in a barn with folk from the local farming community, uh, but we're going to be doing it online. We're going to be giving thanks and praying for their work in a service that Penny and Yvonne uh, have prepared, uh, featuring lots of our farming folk. So do join us at 10 o'clock next Sunday for our Plough Sunday service. Uh, secondly, Lent is on the horizon and we're planning a number of things uh, for it, as well as a service in the morning of Ash Wednesday. There's going to be a number of Zoom groups happening um, and I'm going to tell you about those so that you can let us know if you're interested in any of those. Uh, first of all, we have a group that's going to be using material produced by the charity Embrace the Middle East and it's called Inspired by Hope. Uh, and looks at both issues in the Middle East and our need for hope in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, if you don't want to join the Zoom group, you can still follow that material through in their study guide. The second group will be um, using the material produced by St Martin's in the Field and the National Gallery, um, which looks at different paintings from the National Gallery uh, and is going to be exploring the theme of who is my neighbour. And thirdly, the third Zoom group is going to be part of the diocesan initiative which is called Come and See. During Lent our services will include a talk by Bishop Stephen on one aspect of Christian faith. This Zoom group will be a chance to reflect on his talk and explore the Christian faith a little further. If you're interested in any of those, please do let me know um, so that we can begin to see uh, what is viable and work out which evenings or, or days and so on. Thank you. The third thing just to mention is that we're having an experiment with worship via Zoom. And this evening at six o'clock, uh, Penny will be leading Compline by Zoom. If you would like to join that, then please do contact her or me and we will send you the link that you need. Now to worship. God is spirit. Let us worship him in spirit and truth. The Lord is with us. Let us praise his name together. We are still in the season of Epiphany, so our first hymn, thanks once again to the call scholars of St Martin in the Fields, is songs of thankfulness and praise.
So we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us come to him in sorrow for our sins, seeking healing and salvation. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The collect for this third Sunday of Epiphany. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in our weakness sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So our first reading uh, comes from the Tobin family in Mixbury. The first reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verses 6 to 10. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and like loud peals of thunder, shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Then the angel said to me, Write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. At this I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 80 to 120 litres. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, so they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realise where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. 
Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now Penny brings us our sermon. Jesus attends a wedding at Cana of Galilee. A very familiar story to all of you, I imagine. It's always read at this time of the church's year, Epiphany, the time when the emphasis in the chosen texts is on revealing the real nature of Jesus. It's a story full of images and references to guide our comprehension. The first three words of the chapter alert us on the third day. We'll say those words again shortly in the creed on the third day. On the third day what? He rose again. So as we start following the story, we already have in our minds, albeit maybe subconsciously, the idea that this story is about transformation, new life. The story goes on. There was a wedding in Cana of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. A local marriage, an event encapsulating the promise of love, happiness, future new life. Marriage, an image that we've just heard used in our earlier reading from the book Revelation, used to describe the final fulfilment of those who have come through persecution to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Someone's vision of the end of times when God's kingdom comes. And then in our story at Cana, disaster strikes, the wine gives out. In that culture in those days, this would have brought great shame to the host family. Jesus' mother, conscious of what is happening, says to him, they have no wine. Feasting and wine in the Old Testament symbolise the best that is yet to come, the time of the fulfilment of God's promises to his people. To which Jesus replies, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. Rather bewildering response. Is Jesus indifferent to the possible humiliation of his hosts? And what does he mean by saying, my hour has not yet come? In John's Gospel, whenever Jesus speaks of his hour, it is a term used in the Gospel to reference his glorification through his trial and crucifixion and resurrection, when God's promises to his people are fulfilled. But, he is saying, that moment hasn't yet come. Nonetheless, Jesus' mother has faith that Jesus can redeem the situation and she tells the servants to do whatever Jesus tells them to do. The next moment we see Jesus telling the servants to fill the water jar standing there to the brim. Those jars of water were there so that the guests could carry out the Jewish rites of purification. Once the jars are filled, he instructs a servant to draw some out and take it to the chief steward. Having tasted the wine, the steward concludes that, contrary to the usual practice, the hosts have kept the good wine until now. And this, the transformation of ordinary water into the best of wines, is what John's Gospel calls the first of his signs. It is, of course, also a sign for us. There is a sense today in which the wine has given out. 
We are exhausted. We are running on empty. We want more from life. We want better life, the best life even. This first of signs points to what Jesus can do if invited. There is no forcing of himself upon us. With Jesus, there can be transformation. Gratuitous, generous, gracious. Remember, the jars are filled to the brim. A whole lot of water becomes a whole lot of wine, the best. Jesus takes what is there. He works with and through the confidence and trust of those who work with him. For example, in this case, his mother, the servants. And it is done very quietly. In the story, only the disciples seem to notice what has happened. But it is enough for them to believe in him. In many respects, this story of Jesus reveals in microcosm the whole of his life and purpose. To be with, to work alongside, to bring new life. So we should be confident to invite him to be with us to ask him to work alongside us and to transform us. Because with him, there will be abundance of life. Or as the writer of John's Gospel put it in his marvellous introductory verses, from his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. Amen. Thank you, Penny. And so we say our creed together. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So now our prayers of intercession are led for us by David and Veronica Barnes from Hardwick. Let us pray for the church and the world and let us thank God for his goodness. We will use the responses, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world which is facing the twin crises of COVID and a climate emergency. We pray for those in positions of leadership that God may grant them the wisdom to make good decisions and seek the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who live surrounded by conflict, war and lasting injustice. We pray that Christ, the Prince of Peace and King of Love, may turn hearts from hate and violence and open new opportunities for encounter and understanding. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who live in poverty and face a daily struggle to feed their families and pay their rent. May God grant that the light of hope shines through the darkness and that love for our neighbour inspires and motivates us all to respond generously to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are mourning the death of a loved one at this time, and for all who are missing someone special. May God bring the light of hope and the comfort of his love into their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who feel overwhelmed by worry and stress at this time, particularly those who are in debt or out of work. 
those who are ill or bereaved. We pray that they might find practical help and emotional support close at hand. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We close with some words of a prayer by St Francis de Sales. Do not fear the changes in life. Do not fear what may happen tomorrow. The same understanding Father who cares for you today will take care of you then and every day. He will either shield you from suffering or will give you unfailing strength to bear it. Be at peace and put aside all anxious thoughts and imaginations. Lord of the Church, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. Amen. Thank you, David and Veronica. Christ is our peace. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And so we have our second hymn, Christ is the King, O friends rejoice. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. 
Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who, In the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is Jesus. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. And so we say the prayer for spiritual communion together. Lord Jesus, we believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. We love you above all things and we desire to receive you into our souls. For those of us that cannot at this moment 
receive you sacramentally. Come spiritually into our hearts. May we embrace you as if you were already there and unite ourselves wholly to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. So we say the prayer after communion together. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with the one bread of heaven, so make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.